Hello, I'm Jose Cordeiro, originally from South America, but working in, uh, in the USA, in Japan, the, uh, Russia, and in uh, South Korea, talking about technology and uh, space technologies in particular. Let's return to the technological singularity and what is going to happen when artificial intelligence reaches human intelligence and when we are able to communicate from brain to brain. Because what we are doing now, talking, talking is a very primitive technology. It's, this is very primitive system of very narrow bandwidth, very narrow bandwidth. I have to talk one word by word by word, then I put a little bad joke then another word, another bad joke. So this takes very long. Everything I want to tell you, it's in my brain already, but I cannot transfer it to you. Why? Because speaking, talking, is a primitive technology with narrow bandwidth. In the future, we will communicate from brain to brain, very fast, very efficiently, with broad bandwidth. I'll give you an example of these technologies coming up. Uh, this is a device called MindWave, MindWave made by a company called NeuroSky. And this is one of many such devices, uh, which have electrodes. This is an electrode that you put in your forehead, and this captures what is happening in the frontal lobe of your brain. You make a earth connection on your ear and this has a Bluetooth connection so I can send what is happening in my frontal lobe of the brain into a computer through this Bluetooth connection. This is the beginning of telepathy. We will communicate with something similar to telepathy in 10-20 years. Everything that is in my brain I will transfer with broad bandwidth, not by talking which is narrow bandwidth, but from brain to brain, with all these electrodes capturing what is happening in my brain to your brain or to a computer. This is going to change communications forever because all of this uh, presentation, talk, class, whatever you want to call it, could finish in two seconds, in two seconds. The first second I send all the information and the second second you ask any questions and it is over in two seconds. This is how the future is going to be incredible. We are going to have brain-to-brain -brain communications which are very fast and this will enhance our lives, this will enhance humans and it will help us to do many things which were impossible before, maybe including communicating in a space, in outer space. We will be able to send our thoughts from one uh, space station to another space station or to planet Mars or to another planet. So this is very important in terms of space travel as well. Let me go back to all the technologies because there was a very famous project done by the National Science Foundation in the USA, the National Science Foundation about the technologies of the future. And they basically talk about four main technologies that will change humanity and that will change humans. Those four technologies are nano, nanotechnology, bio, biotechnology, info, infotechnology, and cogno, cognotechnology or cognitive science, the neurons, the brain. All these technologies are converging in what might be this technological singularity in the next 20 years. The first two technologies, nano and bio, are what I call the hardware, the hardware of life. And the two technologies, Info and Cogno, is what I call the software of life. So we have the hardware, Nano and Bio, and we have the software, Info and Cogno. Each technology specializes on a main area, like Nano technology studies atoms, molecules, at the atomic molecular level. Biotechnology studies uh, genes, cells, and these two are the hardware of life. Infotechnology studies bits, bytes, and then cognotechnology studies neurons. Cognotechnology, cognitive science, neurons, the brain. And these two technologies, Info and Cogno, are the software. During the next 20 years, all these technologies are converging. They are converging into this technological singularity. 
and we will be able to reach the complexity level of the human hardware and of the human software in the next 20 years in this technological convergence. We will reach the complexity of the human hardware and the complexity of the human software. Let me explain those to you. What is the complexity of the human hardware? The human genome, which is basically the master plan of our bodies, of ourselves, our hardware, it's comprised of uh, three gigabytes of information. As you know, the human genome has uh, 23 pairs of chromosomes with about 25,000 genes, which are expressed on what are called ATCG, adenine, tiamine, uh, cytosine, and guanine, uh, or something like that. A goes with T and C goes with G. This is the code of life. We have three gigabytes of those bits of information. All humans, we only have three gigabytes of information. ATCG, this is our hard word, three gigabytes. I was telling you that we already have pen drives of 128 gigabytes, 128 gigabytes. So how many humans can we fit here? If this is 128 gigabytes, if you divide that by three, that makes 42.666. So here you can fit the genome of 42 humans and a little cat, because cats are so popular. Uh, so that is the complexity of the human hardware. And we are going to reach that level of complexity. We will be able to replicate that level of complexity and improve on it. In fact, 15 years ago, scientists created the first artificial virus. A virus is the most basic form of life. In fact, sometimes viruses are not alive. They might be alive, they might not be alive, but they are the, the, the shortest, the simplest forms of life forms that we know, at least today on planet Earth. And they are very small, and uh, they were already created artificially in the year 2000. 15 years ago, one scientist recreated an artificial virus. More recently, five years ago, another scientist created an artificial bacteria. Bacteria are bigger than viruses. They are more complex and they have more genetic information. They have more ATCG. But a scientist, a very famous one, Craig Venter, he actually created an artificial bacteria. An artificial bacteria that has no father, which is a bacteria, and no mother, which is a bacteria. So the scientist created this bacteria and he even wrote his email in the genetic code of the bacteria. So the scientist put the email, his email, in the genetic code of this bacteria that has no father, has no mother bacteria, but has email. This is a very interesting bacteria. It's called Cynthia, uh, which has to do with synthetic bacteria, Cynthia. And how long will it take to create then artificial humans? In terms of the hardware, the hardware, remember, which is only three gigabytes. And 15 years ago, I repeat, we created artificial viruses. Five years ago, artificial bacteria. 10, 20 years, we will be creating artificial humans based on the hardware, okay, which is three gigabytes. Now, let me talk about the complexity of the human software, because that is the other component, the software. The software of the brain is basically the processing power of the brain. That is the, the software of the human, okay? Our brain has uh, 10 to 11 neurons, 10 to the 11th power neurons. That is 10,000 million neurons, or 10, uh, I mean 100,000 million or 100 billion neurons. 10 to the 11 neurons. That is the amount of neurons we have in our brain. Each neuron is connected to several other neurons in the order of 1,000 neurons, maybe 2,000 neurons, four, 5,000 neurons. In order of magnitude, that makes 10 to the 14 connections, which are called synapses. So a human brain that has 10 to the 11 neurons has 10 to the 14 synapses or connections. And each synapse computes. 
it is not just the neurons that compute, it is the synapses, the connections between the neurons that compute. The human brain has about six main uh, frequencies, six, ma six main waves. You probably have heard about alpha waves, beta waves, mu waves, etc. The uh, waves of the brain are very slow. Our processing power is very slow. A brain computes at the speed of 1 hertz, 10 hertz, depending on the frequencies, 100 hertz, 100 revolutions per second. A very fast brain, like my brain, is 1000 hertz. I have a brain of 1000 hertz, 1 kilohertz. Okay, but all of the electronic devices today work with chips that are at least 1 gigahertz. So any electronic device today is at least a million times faster than our brain. Why are brains so slow? Our brains are slow because they work with chemical ions. Chemical ions. And electronic devices work with electrons, which go much faster. Okay, so our brains, they go up to one kilohertz, but electronic devices, they begin in gigahertz. Okay, so there is a huge difference. Your telephone, your computer, is at least a million times faster than your brain. If you do not believe me, let me give you an example. Try to divide 4,527.72 divided by whatever, 29.77. We cannot do it fast. Sometimes we cannot even do it slow. But your telephone does it immediately. Your computer does it immediately. Why? Because they are processing in gigahertz and we only process in kilohertz. The difference, obviously, is that we have many more neurons than your computer has transistors today. In 20 years it will be different because your computer will have more transistors than we have neurons. But as of now, we still have an advantage because we have bigger brains, we have more transistors I mean more neurons than a computer has transistors. But again, this will change. So, to give you the, the final number about the complexity of the human software, which is the processing capability of the brain, that is 10 to the 11 neurons, which give 10 to the 14 synapses, um, and at the frequency of 1 kilohertz, that, that makes 10 to the 17 operations per second. That is the processing power of the brain, the human brain which is the most complex structure in the known universe today, that we know of today, okay? Maybe tomorrow there will be a Martian that arrives here and he has a bigger brain with more uh, capacity than our brains. But until that moment, the most complex structure that we know in the universe is our brain and it has a processing capability of 10 to the 17 operations per second. That is what a human brain is. Obviously, if we do not talk about the mind, the spirit, and the soul, and I love to talk about the soul, the spirit, and the mind, but only after three glasses of red wine, okay? Once you have some red wine, you can begin talking about the soul, the spirit, and the mind. Otherwise, a brain is just a machine that computes 10 to the 17 operations per second. And we are going to reach that level of complexity in 10, 20 years at most. Okay? So we will be able to understand how the brain works and enhance our brain and connect our brain to other brains, both human brains and artificial brains. So that is enough to explain the hardware and the software of humans. And we are going to reach uh, the complexity level in the next 10, 20 years, 30 years at the latest. And we will be able to improve on our hardware and improve on our software. So we are living in truly fascinating times. The most incredible things we are going to see in the future. Um, another technology which is interesting, uh, besides nanotechnology going smaller, 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 is 3D printing. 3D printing I work with several 3D printing, typical ones that do things in plastic. This is my master, my mentor. This is Master Yoda from Star Wars. And this is uh, my teeth, okay? These are my teeth. You can, uh, with a 
telephone today, you can take a picture of your teeth and then with a computer make a 3D representation and then say print, these are my teeth. Okay, um, This is very good if you need to change one of your teeth or if you are doing some experiments. Also some other things which are quite unique that you can only do with 3D printing is for example this. This you can only do with 3D printing. You cannot do this in, me in typical mechanical process. You cannot do an extrusion for example to do this shape. And, and you can use different materials. For example, this Singularity University ring was 3D printed. Okay, uh, this is traditional. This is traditional uh, ring, but this is 3D printed. The students design the ring, and then they use a metal 3D printer to make the ring. So we are going to be using a lot of 3D printing in space. Actually. Uh, we have some students from Singularity University that uh, began a company in 2010 called Made in Space and they sent uh, in 2014 the first 3D printer that is in space. That 3D printer is in the International Space Station today. And uh, 3D printing in space is very different from 3D printing on Earth because there is no gravity in space. And that 3D printer in the International Space Station has no gravity. And how do you 3D print something when it does not fall, when the material does not fall? So our students have developed this technology to have 3D printing without gravity. Okay, so this is truly incredible. But um, it is very important because to go into space, uh, you cannot carry many pieces. You cannot carry uh, all the spare parts, all the different uh, parts that you might need for the ISS, the International Space Station, but you can email them. You know, we have internet connection between planet Earth and the International Space Station and then you can send an email with an attachment that has the shape of the piece that you want to print and you can print it in metal as well. So. 3D printing will change manufacturing, not only on planet Earth, but also in space, even without gravity. Sounds incredible, sounds like magic, as Sir Arthur C. Clarke said, if it is not magic, it is not advanced, okay? So this is really magical technologies, and we are going to use all these technologies in space. We will use telepathy to communicate between uh, a space a station and uh, a space a station or another planet. We will use uh, 3D printing and nanotechnology to manufacture anything on the surface of Mars with local materials from Mars and from other planets. So all of these technologies will radically change the human condition both on our planet and beyond our small planet. Mm, we live in truly incredible times truly fascinating times. For the first time in the next decade we will begin colonizing another planet. Um, you might be aware there are several plans, both public and private, to go to Mars. Um, companies like uh, SpaceX, under the leadership of uh, Elon Musk, um, has said that he wants to die on Mars. He wants to go to Mars and to die on Mars but he explained he wants to die on Mars, but not on landing, okay? He wants to die on Mars of old age or something, but not just crashing on landing. Um, other companies like um, Virgin, Virgin Galactic uh, with Richard Branson also have eventual plans to go to Mars. They are going to begin with uh, orbits around planet Earth, but then maybe going to the moon. You could go to the moon for a honeymoon, that would be interesting to spend your honeymoon in the moon, flying in outer space with no gravity and printing things with a 3D printer in space. And then eventually also Mars. Another company, another initiative is Mars One. Mars One is an initiative that started in Holland and uh, it has many influential people supporting the ideas including one Nobel Prize laureate in physics and uh, other people, uh, I myself think they are doing incredible things. 
uh, even though there are some critiques, some problems, but ideas always get better and better. So uh, Mars One plans to send the first humans if everything goes okay in the next 10 years. Uh, besides these private initiatives and some others, there are also public initiatives, government initiatives. So NASA in the USA has plans to go to Mars also in the next 10, 20 years. The same with China. Uh, also India, Japan and Russia are very interested also in going to Mars. Um, so we will be going to Mars fairly soon. In the next 10, 20 years at most, we will be on Mars. There will be humans landing on Mars. And this will change also humanity. Just like when the first humans evolved in Africa, because we know today, also because of the sequence of the genome, we know that we evolved from other monkeys. We evolved from other African apes. In fact, we are like 99% equal to a chimpanzee. We are very similar to monkeys, very similar. 98% gorilla, 99% a chimpanzee. So we know that today. So humans evolved from other apes in Africa. And then we left Africa and we began colonizing uh, the Middle East, Europe, Asia. And then we went to the other two continents, to Australia and to the Americas. Well, now is the time for us for humans to leave our tiny planet and to begin colonizing space with Mars, humans on Mars in the next 10, 20 years. This will change everything. Once we land on Mars, all of our uh, expectations, uh, our dreams will change. They will increase because we will see how much more there is to do uh, in the universe. The universe is huge. Okay, so there is so much more to do in the rest of the universe. And let's begin by going into another planet here in our solar system, and then maybe to another solar system in this galaxy, and then eventually to other galaxies. Because of exponential technologies, we can use different technologies also to go into outer space and maybe even transfer our minds uh, we might not need to take our bodies. In fact, our bodies are not too good to go into outer space. We have many physical limitations with our bodies. So we can actually improve our bodies, change our bodies, uh, have some cyborg bodies, or just go mentally. We can transfer our brains to the cloud. Maybe a cloud, a big cloud here on planet Earth, but an interplanetary cloud, because remember, we are going to have internet also in the solar system. There are some experiments already being done, and we will have um, the capability of sending an email from planet Earth to Mars. It will take about 20 minutes, because Mars is far, uh, very far away, but uh, we will be able to communicate from planet Earth to other parts of the, of the solar system. So I just want to encourage you to think beyond our tiny planet, because the universe is huge. And we have the exponential technologies today to go beyond our planet, to begin thinking big, really big, because the universe is big. There are so many things that we need to discover, that we need to learn. Uh, so think big, because the future is beautiful and there are incredible opportunities for all of us ahead.